My name is Tony Kemp, and I had a spiritual experience in which I saw hell. I literally saw the lake of fire. And I want to share with you um, some of my experience and also share with you some truth and some scripture. The best way for me to describe what I witnessed and what I saw is if you can imagine a uh, lake that is as wide as your eyes can see and as far out as your eyes can see. To describe hell as far as the lake of fire, the best way for me to find words for what I saw is think of hot lava. Think of fire and the colors of fire and think of brimstone. And so you basically just had a lake of fire, dark, smoky, um, and think of the smell of brimstone and the heat. One of the things that I witnessed was a person literally, the best way for me to describe it is they were um, uh, placed within the fire, but it was not as if they could move. It was as if they were stuck there. Think of a person as in, for example, a prison, a very confined space where they were restricted. They could not move to the left, even a step or two, or to the right, a step or two. They were completely, if I can say this to you in a very real sense, frozen in place and surrounded by fire. But here is the fire. It is coming up. It is burning them from within and from without. The best way for me to describe this is because, you know, think about you being inside of a hot oven that's turned up 450, 600 degrees, and you're in a place of absolute darkness. And this darkness, um, you're, you're, uh, you're breathing the heat that's coming up through you. And there's no escape. You can't run, you can't move, you're stuck there. And in, in the spirit realm, you feel things more acutely than you do physically. You still have hunger, but you can't eat. You still have thirst, but you can't drink. If you have an addiction to alcohol, you still crave it. But you are stuck there in a place where time does not exist. All you have is mental pain, emotional pain. All you have is pain. There is no conversation with other people. You're isolated. You're alone. You cry. You weep. But there's nothing you can do. You pray. You scream. But nothing ever changes. And this is going to be your existence. It's inconceivable. It's forever and forever and forever. It never ends. And so this is what hell is like. You burn up, you disintegrate, your spirit reforms, the fire comes up to burn you again. And the evil ones, the demonic beings, surround you to talk to you, to torment you. You get no rest. They curse you. They, they hate you and you can feel their hatred. They torment you. They torture you. This is something that I have seen and some of this I experienced because I found myself in a place of confinement where the demons were torturing and tormenting me. A place of absolute darkness where I could feel myself losing my mind. 
a place where I was hated, a place of darkness. This is not a place you want to go to or you want to live in or you want to be in forever. Now I was taken out of this place. By the mercy and grace of God, I witnessed this place and I did not experience everything that a person could experience in hell. But I experienced enough that I know I don't want to go there. And you don't want to go there. And here's what I want to say to you. I have given my heart to Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I turned from my sins and against my sins. And I committed my life to Christ. Christ died for your sins. He was buried. He physically came back to life three days later. Jesus appeared to his disciples and proved himself alive with many, many infallible proofs. Jesus ascended into heaven and he's now seated at the right hand of God the Father. And if you will admit that you're a sinner by nature and a sinner by choice, and turn from your sin and against your sin, know this, according to the book of John, chapter three, verse 16. God loves you with all of his heart. And he sent Jesus into the earth to take all your sins upon himself and in exchange to give you right standing with God the Father. Christ died and came back to life. And Christ loves you. You don't have to perish in the lake of fire. You can receive eternal life. And also in the book of John, chapter one, verse 12, it says to as many as received Jesus, to them, God the Father gave the right to become a child of God by virtue of relationship with Jesus. And so I wanna urge you to obey the word of God, the book of Romans, a book that the apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome, Italy. Chapter 10, he said, if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and you make Jesus the Lord of your life. He said, all your sins will be forgiven. Every sin that you've ever committed, thinking, talking, or doing, it'll be forgiven. And when you meet God Almighty, he'll never, ever bring it up. You believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you'll be saved because the Bible says, you believe to right living. Now it's one thing to believe in your head and say, I believe in God. But that's not what the Bible is talking about. It says you believe to right living. And with your confession, it is to your salvation. And so I'm gonna urge you to believe to right living. And I wanna lead you in a very simple prayer. When I received Jesus, I didn't know how to pray. I just went to church, maybe Christmas, maybe, um, uh, Easter, but I want to lead you in a very simple prayer. And the prayer goes like this, and God will hear your prayer and he'll receive your prayer. And your human spirit will be brought into the life of Jesus Christ. So very simply pray this prayer. Just say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner by nature and by choice. Dear Jesus, please forgive me. Take every sin away. I repent of sin. I know you died. I know you were buried. I know you came back to life and you're in heaven hearing me now. Dear Jesus, I invite you into my life. Dear Jesus, I give you my heart, I give you my mind, I give you my body. Dear Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. I wanna love you, Jesus. I wanna obey you, Jesus. I wanna follow you, Jesus. I'm yours. Thank you, Jesus. You have forgiven me. Thank you, Jesus. You're now my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Allow me to tell you this.
Just like physical food is nourishment for your physical body, the written word of God is spiritual food for your heart, for your spirit. So I want you to get an easy to understand Bible, modern language, and I want you to begin reading the first two books. These first two books I wanna recommend, Matthew and John. The book of John and the book of Matthew, read them together at the same time. You will not understand everything you read, just believe it. And read from Matthew to Revelation and do it about two or three times, receive the word of the Lord. Because now you are forgiven. Now you are a believer in Jesus. Now your name has been written in the book of eternal life. You're now a child of God. You know, you say, well, I don't know how to pray. Well, you know how to talk to a friend. The Bible calls Jesus a friend. And so talk to Jesus about everything. From sunup to sundown, every single day, develop your relationship with Jesus. Right now, you're feeling a sense of peace. Eventually, you'll feel a sense of joy. There's some things that you used to love that sooner or later, pretty soon, Jesus is going to touch you and you're not going to love them anymore. Wrong things, sinful things. Jesus is going to take those desires away. And then Jesus is going to give you some desires for some new things, some good things. He's getting ready to change your life completely. Allow me to say this to you. The Bible says that if any person is in Christ, and the minute you prayed this prayer, you were in Christ, you're a new creation now. You're becoming something you never were before. And you're going to find out old things are going to pass away. Welcome to a brand new life in the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you richly. Hi, my name is Michelle Steele. I died and went to hell, and I wanna tell you about it. First, let me lead you up to understanding how I reached this place. I ran away from home, ended up involved in crime, addicted to drugs, I found myself over the next eight years following this process of addiction, making bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. My drug of choice was cocaine, and cocaine had taken me down to the lowest of the low. My first husband had died of a drug overdose. I was out of control, lost custody of my children, lost all contact and relationship with my family. I was in the back of a bar in the projects of East Nashville, Tennessee, and I was shooting cocaine nonstop, day after day. I had been for three days, no food, no water, no sleep. I had been shooting more and more cocaine just to be able to feel the effect of what I was doing. I was totally focused on one thing, the next high. And as soon as I would get that high, I was focused on one thing, the next high. And that's where I found myself as I was begging the person supplying the drugs, please put more in because I'm having trouble getting anything out of it. And so he put more cocaine in my spoon. And when I pulled it up into the syringe, and I put that syringe into my arm before I even had the opportunity to pull the syringe out of my arm, my heart stopped. And I found myself standing in front of a skull. It wasn't a skeleton. It was a skull as tall as I was. In that moment, I realized hell is real. I before that moment, thought it was a figment of imagination, something in all the rock songs I used to listen to, something that was a joke. But as I stood there, I was aware, in a way I'd never been aware before, that hell was real and I didn't want to go there. And in that moment, these hands began to reach for me they weren't black hands, they were darkness, as if darkness had hands. 
and those hands began to reach for me and to grasp at me, trying to get a grip on me to pull me into hell. And I was so frightened. I was so aware that I don't want to go into hell that I began to run. I turned and I ran and I ran with all of my might, with all of my energy. I ran back to my body. And when I hit my body, the person who was doing CPR on my body, one minute pumping the chest of a lifeless girl on the floor, the next minute fighting a frantic, screaming, half-crazed girl. And when he got up and, and let me up, I kept running. And I ran down the streets of the projects for almost two blocks in the rain with the blood dripping down my arm before I came to myself and realized I went to hell. Hell is real. And I have a chance to change my life. It was a Sunday. And I went to church that night. And as I sat in the church and the, the preacher got done with the message that he was preaching, he opened up for prayer. I didn't know about prayer. I didn't know how to get help. But when he opened up for prayer, I stood up and I walked to, the, to where the preacher was standing. And I said, I died today. And I went to hell and I don't want to go back. Would you help me? And I don't think the preacher quite knew what to do. He prayed for me. Not knowing the seriousness of how I had encountered almost being pulled into hell. But the person from the church who my family knew found out that I had come and they came and found me and took me to a meeting that was going on, a revival meeting. And when I went into that meeting, I sat in the, the chair. I was on drugs still and I was asleep in the chair. And the preacher came back and woke me up and said, do you want help? And I stood to my feet and I said, I do, I want help. And when he prayed for me, I wasn't aware of the power of God until that moment when I woke up on the floor sober and in my right mind. And I stood to my feet and accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And that's how God got me back on the right track for my life. All the bad decisions that I had made before that time, all of the crimes that I had committed, the sins I had done, the repulsive, repugnant things I had done, they were all a thing of my past. And I was free of the drugs. I was free of the guilt. I was free of the shame. And I was free of that self-destruction that had taken me to that point of death where I nearly entered into hell. And I want you to know that no matter how far you've gone in the wrong direction, no matter how hard you've run away from God, God is still willing and desiring to help you to open up the path and the good things that He has planned for you. If you would just accept His help, you can avoid ever having to experience death, hell, and the grave. You can know the power of the new life that's available that I found on that day when I accepted Jesus as Lord and He set me free. If you would like to know Jesus, I wanna pray for you because the same way that I accepted what he had done for me, you can accept it today. I didn't have a whole lot of Bible knowledge. I didn't have a whole, a whole foundation of, of the scripture or, or understanding of salvation. I just found out that God loved me and he wants to help me and he sent Jesus to die for me. And I wanna tell you today that God loves you regardless of what you've done, in spite of what you've done. He loves you for who you are and He wants to help you today. So right now, just open up your heart to Him. Accept the free gift 
of salvation that's available to you and believe that Jesus died in your place. Say this with me. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I want God to help me the way he helped Michelle. I accept the help that you have for me, God. And I believe that Jesus has risen from the dead and is my Lord. The Bible says that if you'll believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. And that's what just happened. That decision is what will open for you the new life, the good life that God has for you. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me today.